Hi, I'm Richard Knutson. I'm the president of the Information Management Group, or IMG. We're a Chicago-based training and consulting firm, and we specialize in SharePoint and uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And CRM 4.0 recently was released in December of 2007, and it's got a lot of really important improvements in functionality over the previous version 3.0. And for people who need to customize Dynamics CRM, I think one of the biggest areas of improvement is in workflow. So in this demonstration, I'll review with you some of the basic differences and improvements to workflows in Dynamics CRM 4. And in some follow-on sessions, I'll provide more detailed treatment of some specific things you can do with workflows. So I'll start by going into my demo CRM 4.0 system, and I'll point out that here I'm in the web client, and to access workflows, all I have to do is click on settings. Then once I'm in settings, click on workflows. So this illustrates one nice advantage. The user experience is a lot easier, certainly, to get to workflows. I don't have to have a requirement anymore to access the CRM server, say, by remote desktop to get access to my workflows. Now, just for a minute here, I'll click on customizations. And I'll just note that if I export customizations, I can scroll down here. And you'll see that workflows that I've defined within this system are available as customizations to be exported. So this also illustrates another improvement, namely that uh, workflows are now treated consistently along with other important customizations. You'll see things like security roles along with the custom entities, right? So in, in, instead of the uh, kind of different inconsistent treatment they had in the 3.0 product, now we can export all of our customizations at once if I want to, for example, reuse them in another CRM application. But now, let's go to settings, go back into workflows, and let me illustrate some workflow specific things. So suppose I just want to create a new workflow. I can simply click new to do that. I'll give it a little name. I'll call it test. I'm not going to do much with this one. And let's suppose I want to create this workflow on the opportunity entity. I'll go ahead and do that. Click OK. Now, we see the workflow edit form. And you can see here that in addition to the three triggering events we could use in 3.0 for automatic workflows, that was when a record is created, when the status changes, or when the record is assigned, we now have two new events that can trigger our workflow. And these were things that were sorely missing in 3.0 and will make for much better control over what we can do with workflows in this version of the product. So suppose I want to check for any attribute of the opportunity any that changes. If I check that checkbox in and click on select, I could, for instance, pull the probability attribute so now what this workflow will do is as soon as the value of the probability attribute changes, then I can have some workflow fire off when, say, the probability is either upgraded or downgraded. I could also have a workflow that runs when record is deleted. That was also a measure of control we did not have in the 3.0 product. So uh, that will be a, a nice uh, improvement in this version of the product. Now, let's close out of here and illustrate a couple of the other things that I want to talk about. Let's use a workflow that I've already created. So here what I'll do is I'll go down and choose this uh, rather descriptively named workflow here. I'll double click it to open it up. And notice that I can unpublish this workflow from here. I have to unpublish it in order for me to edit the thing. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now, in the new workflow form, one of the things I want you to notice is up here in the workflow properties section, I showed you this a minute ago when we created the new workflow that I, we just looked at. I can basically create the workflow, give it basic properties up here, but then once I've got those established, I can collapse that. It's a toggle switch. I can collapse that and free up more room for my area down here where I can define the logic of the workflow.
Now, this workflow admittedly is a little silly, but it illustrates a point. So one of the things that I want to show you here is the use of this new timeout condition. So notice that this says when an opportunity is created, because this is an automatic workflow that runs on the create event, I check to see if a minute has passed. And the way I do that, I'll click on that position. And I'm using this new workflow timeout value to basically check for a minute having gone by after the opportunity is created. And that timeout condition, that's a new condition in 4.0 that you can do to, um, you know, it makes it a lot easier to create a workflow that simply sits and waits until something happens, or in this case, maybe doesn't happen. Because what we're going to do here is, do a, is check a condition. Once that condition is met, we're going to check to see if the opportunity status is still open. And then we'll create a new message. That is, we'll use the send email action. And I can click this set properties button. And this is one of my favorite new features of workflow in 4.0. What we have here is this nice form assistant where I can use to set the properties, fill in the property of the, uh, of the email that we're setting. And the way this works is pretty nice. I can simply position my cursor in one of these fields, and then I use the form assistant to pick dynamic values out of, in this case, the opportunity entity. So this is going to be sent dynamically to the owner of the opportunity. But notice that I could position the cursor somewhere else. In this case, I've got it positioned in the body of the email. And then I could actually, for example, put um, values from the opportunity entity, such as, for instance, if I wanted to give them some information on the estimated close date, I could click Add, click OK, and just pop it right in there. So now, this is a really nice user interface for filling in um, information dynamically from the workflow into whatever form we're trying to fill in. And I'll just point out here that not only can I access the entity that this workflow is created on, the primary entity, but notice that I can also select different entities. So the re related entities, that is, entities that are related through my CRM system using relationships to the primary entity. And then you can imagine that I can access attributes from those entities. So this is a really powerful and much, uh, much, much more flexible approach to creating dynamic workflows than we had in the previous version. So we'll go ahead and close that here for now. And I could republish this workflow if I made changes to it. And then once I publish this workflow out, it's ready to be used. I can close out of this window. And um, so really what I wanted to show you in this demonstration was really just to give you an overview of some of the most important new features in Dynamic CRM 4.0 workflow. And in other sessions, I'll go through specific aspects of workflows, such as the use of that timeout conditional that we saw in some of the other conditional and uh, aspects to workflows and the greater flexibility we have with the events that triggering workflows. Altogether, a raft of uh, important new improvements. So I hope you found this useful. And if you need to build custom workflows or otherwise customize Dynamic CRM 4, my company's got a three-day hands-on class that covers topics like this in a lot more detail than I can do here in a 10-minute demonstration. So if you have questions, feel free to send me an email or visit the URL you see here. And remember that all of our classes can be attended via the web, where we even set up dedicated lab machines for our online students so you can get the full hands-on instructor-led experience, even if you're not fortunate enough to be able to make it one of our classrooms in Chicago in person.